I see nothing there. Are you sure? This is like really touching on the in intangible. Constant roller coaster, emotional roller coaster for about a year. Welcome to season two of Fuji Girl. In this series, I'm going to use the GFX 100S and I'm going to pair it with three different lenses. The GF 80mm, 50mm and also the 30mm lens. Through setting up scenarios, going into the scene with just one lens and trying to push the lens further, find out what the lens can do. I've made an appointment with a French artist. He will be leaving Singapore to go back to his home country, France. Today I'm going to use the GF 30mm with the magnification at 0.85 times. The 30mm would translate into the 24mm. And the 24mm in today's world is the perspective that we see when we use our handphones to photograph. The 30mm is great for showing smaller spaces. In a narrow space, we would use a wide-angled lens to show the full story, to show the room, to show the details. Um, and thereby, we need to use a wide uh, perspective to see everything. He's kindly allowed me, in the midst of all his packing, to video and photograph his apartment, which I think should be archived. You have to lose your way to find yourself in the right place. I mean, I'm, I'm not Singaporean, but I am Singaporean. I mean, it's like there's no, you know, you have to look beyond those. Uh -uh. This is a real home, yeah, 25 years. The longest I've lived in any one place. <laughs> one of the reasons why I stayed is because I met Gordon in 82. My partner, who passed on in 2013. That was our home for 17 years. This room is a room where I collapsed on the floor crying. You know, when I was leaving for the research, I had a sabbatical. And that's when it really dawned on me, like really sang me. I'm going to close the door on an empty flat, and when I will come back, it will be still empty. That's when I'm poof, here, <laughs> like a piece of shit here. <laughs> you know, when, when you see in those movies, you know, when you see people who crack glass, cry, you think it's cinema? No. You have to experience it to, to realize what it is. So, yes, it's a home. So a home is uh, where the heart is, as a man. To leave home is already half the journey. Alam, <laughs> what can I say? I mean, that's a big, I mean, it's a boop, 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 boop. Once you leave home, that's it. I feel very much Singaporean, but at the same time, I'm not Singaporean. And I'm not French either. I'm French, but I'm not, you know? It's, I mean, it's an ongoing process. You have to lose your way to find yourself in the right place. What is not Roger? Starting in the like late 80s, I started saying the Singapore identity is the absence of identity. In the way there isn't one single identity, which is a Singapore identity. It's made up of many, many identities. Because I did a copy channel talk, so I've been rethinking of the Chan Hong coffee shop in, uh, in Dunham Road. It was like really the epitome of the coffee shop. Chinese family owning the place, selling drinks, and then renting a stall to a Malay family doing Nazi Padang, to a group of Indian guys doing the South Indian fair, you know, like Prata and so on. No Chinese food, so that the kitchen at the back was halal, and everybody could work in the kitchen at the back. There was no rojak, it was not mixing. It's like each identity was very independent, very clearly defined. They were co-existing. And the Kopitiam was that quintessence because it's that neutral space that can adapt, that can welcome any of the identities. So it's about coexisting. it's not about mixing. Singapore is that neutral space. It's that meeting point. That's why it's not Rojak, because Rojak is like a champo, okay? Um, beginning, it was like, when I was going back to France, it was like, oh, France was so weird. My grandmother passed on and I went back so I had to clear the stuff I stored in her place. And rather than throwing them, I decided to burn them in the garden, which was the garden where I used to dance in ecstasy. 
doing that in that place which has become some completely different made me reconnect and I realized that's when I realized the stranger in a strange land thing I had always been a stranger in a strange land yes I'm French and blah, blah, but pff, I never fully identified so when I left I thought, oh yeah it's me arriving in Singapore yeah I'm a stranger in a strange land and it feels perfectly fine yeah. friend in Bintan had promised to go and Eat durian, five o'clock in the afternoon. Perfect light. The Chinaman with a t-shirt. The father, the Indonesian father, arriving on a motorbike with the four kids, you know. And there was that moment which was like, okay, picture perfect. I know everything. Nothing is foreign. Nothing is alien. And if I have to leave, if I have to let it go, I can. Until then it had been that urge to be physically in that environment because it meant that I was not in the environment of the origin. That moment was like, yes, it's in me. It will never go out, it will never leave. It's with me. I love the form, I don't have to be in that form just like so many things I've done here in the course of 40 years. Ta-da, MRT! So after that, they gave it to a proper design company to carry on. A non-stop effervescence of creativity and pushing boundaries towards new horizon, new energy, new identity. Mm. What are you shooting?